We are working on taking the derivative using the chain rule, but we're also working on combining it with some of our larger rules. In the last example, we had to combine it with a product rule, but we knew the very first rule that we had to do was the product rule because we had separate pieces. I had two separate inside-outside pieces, so that told me the rule that I should start out with was the product rule. Let's look at another example here where I have 3x minus 2 over x minus 1 squared. We know that we're going to have to do a quotient rule because there's a fraction, but we're also going to have to do a chain rule because we see an inside and an outside piece. Again, the hardest thing for students to understand is which one do I start with? Do I start with a quotient rule or do I start with a chain rule? My explanation is, again, if you have one inside piece and one outside piece, you need to start with the chain rule. If you have two separate pieces, then you need to start with whatever rule is appropriate. So in this case, I have one inside piece and one outside piece. So I need to do my chain rule first, and then in taking the derivative of my chain rule, that's where I need to take the quotient rule involved. So let me go ahead and write out this step here. My derivative, dy dx, is the chain rule first, where I bring my power down, I keep my inside the same, I subtract a power to the first power times the derivative of the inside. So let me go ahead and just write out that. So the derivative of the inside, so I'm going to put a prime on there. So I had one inside piece, one outside piece, so I started with my chain rule, I brought my power down, I kept my inside piece the same, I subtracted a power, and then I need to take it times the derivative of the inside. And now here is where I'm going to use my quotient rule. So let me go ahead and actually do that there. So my quotient rule says the original of the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the original of the bottom squared. And so now I have officially taken the derivative using both of my larger rules here, a chain rule and a quotient rule. So all I need to do is simplify this problem and then we are good to go. So to simplify it, let me simplify my quotient rule over here. I'm going to do that by distributing my three here and my negative through there. I'm going to put this 2 over 1, just so you know that you can put it in the numerator, separated from the denominator. And I'll use that to my advantage here in a second. So when I distribute, I get 3x minus 3 minus 3x plus 2, and that is all over my denominator squared. Combining like terms, and copying down the rest of the problem, my 3x and my negative 3x cancel out. Negative 3 plus 2 gives me a negative 1, and that is over x minus 1 squared. Okay, we've simplified each individual piece, but now it's time to look at it as one big unit, one big function here. So I need to start combining everything along the way. We know when we multiply fractions, we can multiply straight across. So that's what I'm going to do to simplify, to give me my final answer here, my most simplified version. The derivative is equal to, on the top, I can multiply 2 times negative 1 to give me negative 2 times this 3x minus 2. And I can choose to distribute it through, but we typically know factored form is best. In my denominator, I have an x minus 1 times an x minus 1 squared. So what that means is I really have three of these x minus 1s. So my denominator is best written as x minus 1 to the third. So I've simplified everything along the way, and so this gives me the derivative of this function here. 
Again, to review, if you have one inside piece, then you need to start with the chain rule. And inside the chain rule, that's when you need to take the derivative of whatever you see on the inside. So for this example, that's when we needed to do the quotient rule. Now, I want to address this problem again because my reminder to you is not only the purpose of this class is can you memorize and use the derivative rules as you see them, but can you manipulate it and can you take the derivative of it the easiest way that you know how. So in this problem, I took the derivative exactly how we saw it, but that's not the only way that we can take the derivative of this problem. So if you did not like that way, you are more than welcome to manipulate it and take the derivative of it another way. For example, instead of writing it as all of it to the second power, I could have separated it out. I could have wrote it as the numerator to the second power divided by the denominator to the second power. Now, I'm still going to have to use my two large rules. I'm still going to have to use a quotient rule and a chain rule, but here I'm going to have to use them in the opposite order. I have two separate inside and outside pieces, so the very first rule that I needed to start with is then the quotient rule. So let me go ahead and write that out. So the derivative of this here, using my chain rule, was the original of the bottom times the derivative of the top, and that's why I would have to do a chain rule, minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom. And that's why I would have to use a second chain rule, because I have two separate inside-outside pieces. All over the bottom quantity now, I'm not going to walk you through the steps to simplify this, but I will show you the work in case this is your preferred method of choice. So this would be a great time to pause the video and see if you can finish this one on your own. Just note that you should end up with the exact same answer that we got back here because you're taking the derivative of the same problem. You're just using a different method. Okay, so quickly walking through the steps, we took the derivative using my chain rule. So here's the derivative of the outside to the first power times the derivative of the inside. That gives me this one here. And then there, the derivative of the outside to the first power times the derivative of the inside. That gives me this one here. I just rewrote it in a little bit better order to make it a little bit prettier. From here to here, I have factored out my common factors between my two terms, this one and this one. In my brackets, I distributed, and here I canceled out an x minus 1, leaving me with three of them in the bottom. Simplifying my brackets, that gives me negative 1, and so that gives me my final answer of this here, negative 2 times 3x minus 2, all over x minus 1 to the third. And we know that this is the exact same answer that we got when we did it the other way. The chain rule first, and then the quotient rule when we took the derivative of the inside. Yet again, I want to remind you that you can always search other options to take the derivative besides the way that it was given. So we took this problem and we converted it to each piece individually squared. But we could have actually manipulated it one more way. What we could have done is changed it into a product rule rather than a quotient rule. So I could have taken this denominator and moved it upstairs to give it a negative exponent. So that would be 3x minus 2 squared times an x minus 1 to the negative second power. And so you could have taken the derivative of it this way. Since I have two separate inside-outside pieces, I know that I would need to take the derivative of it by using the product rule first. And then in my product rule, I'd have to take the derivative of a chain rule here and the derivative of a chain rule there. This is a lot like the example that you saw in the last video. 
Again, I'm not going to walk you through every single step, but I will show you the work in case this is your preferred method of choice. And we know that this is obviously going to give us the same answer that we got when we did it the last two ways. I again encourage you to pause the video and see if you can get to that answer on your own using this method. Okay, so I did the product rule where I have to take the derivative of these two pieces using a chain rule, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. I just rewrote things to put it in the preferred format. From here to here, I took out my common factor of 2, x minus 3 to the negative third and 3x minus 2. Let me address that because that's where students usually have an issue when they do this. Remember when you take out a common factor, you can take out your least amount. So here I had negative 2, and here I have negative 3 of these x minus 1. To take out the smallest amount, the negative 3 is actually a smaller number, and so that's why I take out negative 3 of them here. To figure out how many I have left, I take my original amount, which was negative 2, and I subtract the amount that I took out, which was negative 3. That actually gives me negative 2 plus 3, which gives me positive 1. And so that's why I have positive 1 of them left over here. I distributed through what I needed to. That gives me a negative 1 in my brackets. Combine that with 2 to give me negative 2. Move my negative exponent back down to the denominator. And so I have the same answer yet again that I did the last two ways that I did this problem. So the emphasis on this here is to not necessarily take the derivative of the function as the way you see it, but ask yourself what's going to be the easiest way to take the derivative of this function for you. Some students might prefer the method that we started out with. Some students might prefer the second way that we did it. And some students might prefer computing it to a product rule and doing it that way. It is up to you, it's your personal choice, figure out what way is the easiest way to take the derivative from you and go from there. And so now we've seen three separate examples of one problem where we combine two of our larger rules, a quotient rule, a product rule, and a chain rule.